All right, ladies and gentlemen, it has been 10 weeks since the last time we updated the tier four tier list. So today I wanted to give you guys an update because in that time we have had five new tier four characters, the most recent of them all being the terror of timeline, the new timeline God, the man of the hour, him, if you will, Adam Warlock. Now, the last time we updated the tier list, that was at the end of March. If I'm not mistaken, it was on March 27th. As of me making this video, it is June. You guys may wonder why I wait a couple months to do these updates. And the simple fact is I like to take my time and play with these characters so I get a good gauge, not only at how strong they are individually, but by contrast to the other tier four characters in the game. And if they're bringing anything new to the table because if it's just a little bit more damage in some cases they're strong but capable so this is what i had the tier list looking like last time however i've made some revisions because you guys gave me some feedback so as you can see i've added a couple new categories because last time i had a couple people saying maybe you should add a category for characters that you really only need to bring to level 80 because getting them up to tier 4 although you obviously get get more damage you don't necessarily need that more damage because they're already good enough and that more damage is only going to help you maybe clear the stage a little bit faster but you're not going to be able to use them in higher stages in world boss legend per se so getting them to tier 4 might not be the best use of your materials and i am going to take your opinions on that and we put a whole different category just for you guys in addition to that i added a new category for characters who absolutely need their tier 4 otherwise you shouldn't even buy their uniform and i added this category specifically for one character and when i put that character there you will know exactly what i'm talking about so with that being said let's get to shuffling this thing around so with adam warlock's introduction to the game um in this new guardians of the galaxy uniform he's become the second best pvp character in the game i kind of want to put him in the best in the game category here with gene gray but i don't know how i feel about having two characters in there and i think even now jean gray offers a little bit more value than adam warlock because she has dedicated days that she can be used the universal female super villain day in abx and a female super villain day in abl in addition to the fact that she's great for giant boss raid she's literally the best giant boss raid character she clears it the fastest out of every character in the game so that's pretty wild and she's used a world boss legend and she is still in my opinion you guys can argue this the best pvp character in the game introduce a little anarchy upset the established order and everything becomes chaos Adam Warlock, very close. You can argue that Adam may be a little bit better for PvP. It's up to you. But Jean Grey's overall value still trumps Adam Warlock. So I don't know if I feel like putting two characters in the best in the game category. And most people who are buying Adam Warlock, they're buying him primarily for PvP, not for PvE because he's a creature and he doesn't have very many useful tags. So you won't really use him in World Boss Legend unless you're using him on like a superhero blast stage and for something like that you'd be using iron man because iron man can do it so you wouldn't be buying adam warlock for that so i'm going to put him in the pvp meta category because that's where most people are going to be buying him to be used and i was thinking about moving up the pvp category above the world boss legend category but i really can't do that because most people only get 200 220 crystals from timeline battle every week now obviously that adds up over the course of many months and you can buy uniforms and characters and whatnot so if you're not playing timeline battle you're kind of not playing the game correctly but then when you take a look at the value of world boss legend that's where you get your tier 4 material your tier 3 material pretty much everything you need you could literally play the game without playing timeline battle and still get crystals from login and special gifts in your dailies and stuff but some dailies would tie into doing timeline but whereas in world boss legend if you play this game and do not play world boss legend you will never have a tier 4 and if you never have a tier 4 you're going to be struggling in pretty much all of the end game content so i have to kind of put world boss legend a little bit higher and i should truly put it above abl because i think it is the most valuable game mode 
currently available i wish we had more game modes that were just as valuable if the devs are watching this is what you need to do for other game modes make them as valuable as world boss legend what the hell did you just say now one could argue that pvp should be above abl because crystals are more valuable than the abl rewards so we'll have it structured like this if you guys want it to be structured differently in the future please feel free to let me know in the comments i'm always reading the comments and i'm willing to listen to all of your feedbacks now we're gonna restructure this tier list a little bit by putting spider-man above hulk because of the fact that now that adam warlock is in the fold one of the few characters that can actually counter adam warlock is spider-man hulk is gonna get dusted truthfully speaking at this point hulk has to be behind carnage because carnage with his undead artifact might be able to counter adam warlock because of the fact that he can stay alive for seven seconds with that artifact whereas with hulk adam hits you with the second skill you're just dead dead he ain't lying. and i truly have to move black bolt up ahead of dr octavius because even though dr octavius is really good for abl overall as a character black bolt is just far superior for world boss legend giant boss raid etc and he's just as good in abl and thor i'm actually going to move into the world boss legend category because now that we have star lord he's actually become the new meta for abl however he's one that i'm gonna put in the knees tier four because star lord survivability is so bad <laughs> like it's actually so bad for world boss legend and giant boss right pretty much everything unless you get into tier four now i'm gonna move iron man up to world boss legend because of the fact that he hits so many different boxes he's a blast superhero male human and those tags pop up the most out of any tags in world boss legend and then he also has energy projection which pops up i believe quite a few times now in the spirit of fairness i guess it only makes sense to put star lord in the abl category because he is indeed abl meta whether he needs the tier 4 or not and every character in abl meta category currently needs their tier 4 it goes without saying so i guess i'll put him there but just do keep in mind that if you're buying the uniform for star lord you're buying an abl character and you will need to tier 4 him for him to actually not be a disappointment to you as opposed to some of these other characters just getting them a level 80 they'll be really good they have decent survivability and very good damage star lord's damage is pretty good even before he gets his tier 4 but his survivability is atrocious so keep that in mind next up we have gamora and here's the thing about gamora gamora is actually stronger than shadow shell however she cannot completely replace shadow shell because shadow shell is a human and there is two different abl days there is a speed human female alliance battle legend day and there's also a speed female day so those two days existing means these two characters are actually now meta even though they are almost identical speed female speed human female all you guys were waiting for luna snow and that marvel is basically edging you guys they're you know they're basically trying to see how much they can squeeze out of people before they eventually release her there's a reason why black widow is better than shadow shell in abx but not in abl and shadow shell is actually worse than black widow in abx it's very very strange because if shadow shell was actually better than black widow in abx black widow's value would drop tremendously so you have three speed characters that are almost identical that are all relevant at the exact same time next up we have sharon rogers and sharon rogers is a character that is incredibly powerful but there's nothing at tier 4 that you currently need her for and you're better off saving your resources until we have more ways to farm more tier 4 materials or if you're a massive blubber we will you can just tier 4 every character and don't even think about it just but for me personally she's one of those characters like professor x like captain america like venom like ant-man that if you really like and you absolutely have to have them get them to level 80 and play with them there and that is enough 
if you want to tier for them go ahead and do it but you in most cases will be going far and beyond for very little in return sure you will have more power but power without purpose is rather useless if you ask me but by all means do whatever you want to do just don't cry in the comment section and don't cry on the forums when they release a super toxic character that truthfully speaking adam does not need his tier 4 to be great but i'm gonna put him here in the pvp meta category because it makes sense that's where he is i'm gonna let you guys know though for my tier 4 adam warlock i didn't see a significant enough improvement to say yeah tier 4 for him is a must have tier 4 for gene gray must have tier 4 for adam warlock not a must have if you don't really care about the character like that if you just want the power of him being one of the most dominant pvp characters by all means go ahead and tier 4 him you'll get a little bit more survivability and a little bit more damage next up we have thanos and thanos covers a lot of pve content but he's also abl meta I kind of want to put him ahead of these guys just because he is better than them, better than pretty much everybody here for World Boss Legend and Giant Boss Raid, but he cannot cap, or at least I have not seen anyone cap, and I can't cap with mine unless they're using a brilliant CTP of Rage, then they may be able to cap, but here's the thing. Magneto can cap with a Mighty, Dr. Octopus can cap with a Mighty, she can cap with a Mighty, and he can cap with a Mighty, and I think even Star-Lord not only has the uh, support from Rocket and Groot, can also cap in ABL with a mighty. But when it comes to war boss content, far and away Thanos is better than everybody else here. I'm thinking I should remove the skippable character category because everybody in the level 80 only category is basically a skippable character. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this category. Let me know if you guys want me to bring it back. But I like how this looks much better. And truthfully speaking, she needs her tier 4 to actually hit really hard at level 70 in this uniform at level 80 she is truly underwhelming and even at tier 4 at this point literally the only content that I see myself using Blue Dragon for is Alliance Conquest so will you tier 4 a character for Alliance Conquest? Oh hell 